Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the standard error of the mean using Microsoft Excel. I have in this worksheet some fictitious data. I have one variable with ID numbers, and there's 20 ID numbers. And then I have corresponding scores for those ID numbers. And let's just presume that these are scores on a final exam and that the maximum possible score on the exam would have been 100 and the minimum possible score would be 0. So I'm going to calculate the standard error of the mean for these data, for these 20 scores. And I'm going to break that down step by step over here, starting with the standard deviation. So it's important to understand that the standard deviation and the standard error of the mean are two separate constructs. Standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. It quantifies variability in a distribution. For example, the standard deviation I'm going to calculate here will tell us about the dispersion of scores that we have here. Standard deviations are expressed in the same units as the unit of analysis for the data. So if this again were a final exam score and these were points, the standard deviation would be in points. So to calculate the standard deviation for a sample, we're going to assume that this is a sample of a larger population, so this is a sample of scores, but the entire population of scores would be much larger. So for a sample standard deviation, equal sign ST DEV dot S. It's a sample standard deviation. And then for the arguments, we'll select the scores. And press enter, and we can see the standard deviation is 5.25 points. So if we were to presume these data were normally distributed, we would expect that 68% of the scores would fall within 5.25 points above and below the mean, or one standard deviation above and below the mean. And roughly 95% of the scores would be within two standard deviations above the mean and two standard deviations below the mean. Now the standard error of the mean is a different concept, as I mentioned, and it quantifies the precision of the mean. It measures how far a sample mean, for example, the mean of the sample we have here, is likely to be from the true population mean. And similar to the standard deviation, it's expressed in the same units as these data. The standard error of the mean is always smaller than the standard deviation. A practical application of the standard error of the mean is to calculate confidence intervals. And that's also a good way to understand the standard error of the mean. So I'm going to make a few other calculations so that we can calculate the standard error of the mean and then I'll show you how to calculate the upper and lower limit for the 95% confidence interval. So we have the sample standard deviation and the next value that we'll need is the sample size. So in Excel that's count and then the range. Now we know it's going to be 20. Let's see, sample size of 20. And then we'll need the square root of the sample size. So in Excel, square root is SQRT. And we'll select sample size. And we can see the square root of the sample size is 4.47. So from this point, calculating the standard error of the mean is fairly straightforward. The standard error of the mean equals the standard deviation 
divided by the square root of the sample size. So that would be equal sign, standard deviation, divided by square root of the sample size. So it's roughly 1.17. Now I broke this down into several steps to make it easier to understand how we calculate the standard error of the mean. But you could put the calculations necessary in one cell. So I'll move to the right here and show you how you do that. It would be first the standard deviation. I'm going to put that in parentheses. So it would be stdev.s, the sample standard deviation of these scores. And then it would be divided by forward slash the square root of the count for these scores, the number of scores. And we can see we arrive at the same value, 1.17. If I were to expand this column width a little bit, you actually get the exact same value. All right, so moving forward, how do we use this to calculate the 95% confidence interval? Well, now that we have the standard error of the mean, 1.17, we know that the upper limit of the 95% confidence interval will be equal to the mean plus the standard error of the mean times 1.96. And the lower limit will be equal to the mean minus the standard error of the mean times 1.96. So moving into the upper limit, we'll first calculate the mean, which would be average, and then the range of scores, the cells B2 through B21. And then we want to add the standard error of the mean multiplied by 1.96. So there's our function. So we have the mean plus the standard error of the mean times 1.96. That's the up, upper limit. So the upper limit for the 95% confidence interval is 87.4. So I'm going to go into this function and I'm going to make the range for the average an absolute reference by pressing F4 and the standard error of the mean an absolute reference as well. And now I can just autofill this whole function down into lower limit and instead of average plus standard error of the mean times 1.96. I'm going to change the plus to a minus, and that gives me the lower limit. So the upper limit for the 95% confidence interval, 87.4, and the lower limit, roughly 82.8. And what this tells us is that you can be 95% confident that the true population mean from which this sample was drawn is going to fall between 87.4 and 82.79. I hope you found this video on calculating the standard error of the mean to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.